Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you. How's everybody doing today? So, we have less than a week till the team flies out to Oxnard, California for training camp. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to get to go this year because it always seems to fall right around my birthday. Now, Mark is going. I'm a little jealous, which also means he's going to miss my birthday party, but it's all good, though. I'm happy that he gets to go and sees the players and stuff. I, I've never been to training camp before. Hopefully, I could go next year. We'll see. But this year's a wrap, so ain't got the money. So it is what it is. I'm just hard working brother trying to make it. That, that's that's all it is. So, but um, shout out to Law Nation on giving me some of this material about um, this article that that he had found. So I just want to talk a little bit about it. So if you guys haven't seen the article about the interview with um, Drew Pearson. So they were basically asking him about Des Bryant and the state of this team without Des Bryant. Um, he was basically saying that the atmosphere is going to change. That's pretty much a no-brainer. We we know the atmosphere is changing, not just without Des, but without Witten, without Tony Romo, without Orlando Scandrick, Anthony Hitchens, whatever. Your team changes every year. The complexion of your team changes every year. That's why it's so hard to win a Super Bowl or even repeat a Super Bowl. That's why nobody has repeat more than the Dallas Cowboys have because of that reason. Now, there's been teams like the Patriots that win often, but not back to back like that. It's hard to do this. It's really hard to do that, to maintain the same core players over and over again because of the salary cap. Now, um, he was basically saying that, like, your team is better when you spread the ball out, which reiterates basically what Dak was saying himself that, hey, I don't need a number one receiver or a go-to receiver to be successful in this league. And if you read his stats, the stats say it itself. Basically, the Dak is better. You look at when Des Bryant was not playing. Dak's stats were better because he was able to th um, evenly distribute the ball out to the open guy instead of worrying about somebody doing this in his ear. Hey, I was open, this and that, and the third. So... Without that distraction, he's a much better player. Now, <clears throat> don't get me wrong. I, I, I will miss Dez. I, I, in my opinion, I think that Dez, in my mind, will always be a Dallas Cowboy. But, you know, he just couldn't – his his attitude, the team was just couldn't deal with it. So, Drew Pearson goes on to say that um, – he talks about how when he came into the league in 74, 75, and his second year in the league <clears> – <throat> Um, sorry, y'all. I'm just still trying to get over a cold. Um, I'm at the end of it right now. You know when you have a cold and it's like you're at the end of it, you're like, all right, just come out. Yeah. And it's summertime and having a summer cold is the worst. Like, I didn't even know. This is my first time ever being sick in the summertime. Like, I didn't know that you get a cold in the summertime. It's crazy. But that's neither here nor there. But basically, um, Drew Pierce in his second season, he um, it was all pro. But the only problem with that is it's great for him. But he was the only one on the team that was all pro that year. The team sucked. They didn't make the playoffs. I don't even think they got past five wins that year. But I got to go back and look. But, yeah, but then you look at 77, 78, 79, they won the Super Bowl after the 77 season, and then they started winning playoffs after that. Now, what was the cause of that? Well, Roger Stahl back at the helm, you had he was able to distribute the ball around because he had more weapons. Um in 77, he had um, what, Tony Gill there. So you had Tony Gill, you had Drew Pearson, and you had um, uh, Tony Dorsett. Tony Dorsett had over 1,000 yards rushing that season. Tony Gill had um, uh, over 1,000 yards receiving, and so did Drew Pearson. So when you have multiple players on your team doing their job and being successful, it works out for you instead of just having that one. Because what happens is teams are able to lock into you like they did Dez. They can double team you, do whatever they need to do. When Cole Beasley had that good year, the next year what they do, they locked him down and he wasn't able to do anything. That's that's what they do. So, But if you have multiple players doing it, creating what we like to call pick your poison offense, there's nothing they can do. They just have to choose whoever they, they think they're going to get the ball. And and that's when the coaching comes into play, being able to decipher that and switch it up and not being the same. So he 
he was basically saying that this team would be better. And he's looking at this receiving core now. He was basically saying that last year he was disappointed in Dez and the rest of the receiving core because they didn't hold up to their end of the deal. Now, he said that there had to be a change. And, again, the team made the, the necessary adjustments that they thought that would better the team. Um, we'll see if that if that is true or not this coming season. But one thing that is different is the – is the attitude and the atmosphere, like he said. The atmosphere is different because you don't have that person in the locker room being a distraction. These other guys can, even the new guys, they can come in and they can step up to their place and they can do what they need to do and concentrate. In my earlier videos, like I said, y'all seen Dak have his cohesion with his wide receivers and going on trips and going to Disneyland and, and whatever, Disney World, whatever, and, and having that time with them. And it just it just it just goes back to that whole chemistry thing. If you got chemistry and you know what that player is gonna do, nine times out of ten he's gonna be at the right spot when you need it. Everybody talks about Sanjay Lau being a technique guy when it comes to running routes. Okay, if that's the case, then these guys should be better at running routes. And technically our wide receiver core should be better just by looking at that. Now, Drew Pearson did say that um, he thinks that the wide receiver core is going to be better this year because of that reason. Um, he basically was talking about Dez and just saying that, you know, it's, it's, it's a better offense when you don't declare a go-to person. Now, I'm not saying that Dez was necessarily a cancer, but he was definitely somewhat of a distraction. I mean, he was a great player. Um, he, was, he was a great player, but the problem with great players is they – sometimes get that diva mentality. Terrell Owens had it. Jerry Rice had it. Michael Irvin had it. It's that diva mentality. He was just basically saying that if you have a number one wide receiver that's missing meetings, sleeping in meetings, coming late to meetings, um, not doing the right things or being the model player, the younger guys are going to follow him and be like, well, if he don't have to do that, I don't have to do that. This is the whole reason why losing Jason Witten is a big thing because – Jason Witten is the model guy. I mean, he's a model husband. He's a great father. Like, you see how he is. It's almost like nobody's perfect. But 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 it would seem like Jason Witten was perfect just because the type of guy he was. He was so smart. He was so humble. And he did what he had to do every day. And he led by example. Now, Dez doesn't necessarily do that. And because of that um, perception that he has from the outside – people don't look at Dez as somebody that's necessarily a leader. Not saying that he's not a great guy. I mean, I, I like Dez. I think he's a good guy, but he tries hard, but he just doesn't understand that, like, when you do certain things, people are watching you, especially when you're of that stature and um, when you're expected to be a certain thing and you're getting paid $70 million over a course of time, you're expected to live up to that or at least – satisfy the minimum of what they're asking you to do. Now, um, Drew Pearson also uh, said the phrase destructive achievers. Basically, what he meant by that was a great player on the field, but and as long as you were winning, but if you started losing, it, he was one of the guys that would point the finger or, or not own up to his mistakes. And that's not what we need on this team right now, especially because we're going through a, a stage right now where our team is young and these guys have to mold together. Again, I love the fact that they're working together and they're trying to um, have chemistry with each other. See, these players ain't stupid. They read the articles. They 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 hear the stuff that Sports Center and ESPN and, and First Take and everybody talking about them, whether it's positive or negative. They know. And some players might be more sensitive than others to certain things. They're human. I get it. And they're young guys. That stuff will get to them. Because I know if I was in the NFL and people kept talking bad about me, I'm like, I'm a type of person. I'm very confident when it comes to, you know, what I can do. But, you know, you're human. It's going to get to you. You're going to be like, damn, that's how they really feel? So that just puts a drive in you to get better and do what you need to do. And basically that's what Dak did. He's like, oh, y'all want to talk trash about me? Y'all want to say that Carson Wentz is so much better than me? I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show y'all who the beast in the East is. So <clears throat> when when they said that 
people are going to be surprised about Dallas. I believe that. And I'm not saying that because I'm a fan. I'm saying that realistically because <coughs> you look at the potential that we have right now. I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, we definitely have the chance to basically do something. And I stand by that. And like I said, I'm proud of Dak. I'm proud of the team as a whole. You know, too bad that Dez couldn't figure it out before, but now we have to move on without him. We got Alan Hearns. We got Michael Gallup. We got a whole host of guys that, you know, Cole Beasley, Terrence Williams. We, we just have to figure out what we're going to do with these guys and how are they going to fit the mode of the new Dallas Cowboys, the 2018-2019 Dallas Cowboys. What are we going to do? So, like I said, training camp is next Wednesday. We'll see what happens um, when they get when they get it kicked in the high gear. Because again, everybody's jockeying for position. Every there's no position out there right now that's safe, none. So everybody got to step up, and and everybody is feeling it right now. From the quarterback to the tight end to the receivers to the offensive defensive line, DBs, all everybody on the team is feeling the pressure because you are. One injury, you are one slip up, you are one attitude away from losing your spot to somebody else. And that's how it should be. The competition should always be there because your craft and the way that you are and the way that you perform every day matters. And if you are a leader, people watch you. And that's what Des Bryant didn't understand. That's why he's not on this team anymore. Um, that's the real reason. So. I agree with what Drew Pearson said. I think that this team that doesn't necessarily need a number one receiver, but they do need some guys that do their job. They need depth. They need guys to do their job, and that's that's all that's all that I ask for. You know what I mean? Like it's all cool to have a superstar on your team. We already got one. We got Ezekiel Elliott. I mean, you can't have a stake on every plate. Every position can't have a superstar because there's not enough money to go around on the salary cap. That's just what it is. This isn't like in the. Um, in the seventies and stuff where that era we didn't when we that time when we didn't have the salary cap. But we got it right now. So you gotta be smart about it and you gotta know how to coach. So I just um I was talking to Law Nation about this too. Um he was basically saying the same thing I was saying and I know Vosh doesn't agree but it is what it is. I feel like my only worry about this team is the coaching staff. I think that if this coaching staff gets it together, if Linehan gets it together, Jason Garrett gets it, gets it together, and we start winning these games, and you have to realize that, okay, I, I understand, Jason Garrett, you're a conservative guy, but you can't be stubborn because football is not a conservative thing. You have to you have to be realistic. you got to be logical, and you got to be willing to make changes. You don't go into the locker room of any type of sport at halftime and not make adjustments. I don't care if you're winning by a whole lot, you still have to make adjustments because you don't want that team to catch up. And if that team is leading you in a half, you want to be able to catch up, but you have to make the necessary changes. So that's all I got right now. So I just wanted to um, share that with you guys. Um, I'll be talking about some more stuff too um, in, in a later date, but that's just what it is for now, yo. Like, share, comment. Um, I appreciate all my subscribers. You guys have been awesome. Um, I'm loving the comments. Um, and like I said, we all have our opinions about things, and that's what makes us special. So this has been your boy, E2Blue, always keeping it real. I'll talk to you all soon.